what's good family so mash the like button subscribe and lick off the bell well 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 this was really quite an interesting fight and i can't lie i'm part of me shocked at the reaction to it in as much as people thought it was a close fight now if it was a close fight it was a close fight because both men didn't do nothing all night truth be known a massive letdown and on that basis it should have been a draw but apart from that i thought it was clear that tank edged it if that makes sense now let me say this if isaac cruz had to put himself on the line and really dug deep and kind of ri risked himself for the w it was there for the taking and what got me was a lot of the people were complaining saying our oh, tank got a gift decision and my whole thing is we know this going in we know a mayor of a promotions card is going to benefit tank so when you know that rightly or wrongly it's on you to do the most especially when Cruz came out and said that oh yeah I knew his hand was bust from the fifth round so I think to myself wait there a minute you know his hands bust you know it's a mayor of a promotion show so you've got all the advantages possible in as much as you've got a man with one hand yeah you're all the excuses you're backing him up but your hands weren't going he wasn't active enough he wasn't putting enough hands together and it's not like he fights like Alvarez where Alvarez he may not have the volume but when he digs he digs it's clean it's effective it's not muffled it's you know what I'm saying it's, well, it's, it's a proper commitment and it's landing yeah Cruz there's two ways to skin a cat you can do the go in there De La Hoya versus Mayweather approach go in there and volume or you can do the, the new Alvarez approach go in there and put one or two big shots together and reset and cut the ring off again and put one or two big shots together again Cruz got caught in that zone for me where it's almost like well I don't really want to put myself out I don't really want to risk my own chin because we know listen one hand or no one hand tank is a dangerous puncher so I'm not disputing the fact that Cruz had to be smart but listen end of the day do you want to beat the main guy or not do you want to beat the world champ or whatever or not can we sit there and say that Cruz really put himself out tonight I don't think so now like I said the fight was close because both men didn't do much but to sit here and say that oh, it was a robbery I don't think so and, and to be honest with you <clears throat> seeing how Cruz was pressuring Tank all around the ring I'm actually frustrated because to be honest especially now we know that his hand was bust this fight should have been Cruz's if that makes sense I feel if Cruz had gone in there with kind of like the Cambosis mentality and really wanted it and was prepared to put himself out Cruz had won tonight instead he kind of felt or instead Cruz's performance looked to me as if he was thinking well maybe I can just maybe I'm just gonna get lucky tonight maybe the judges are gonna see it in my favor rather than saying Dana White style don't leave it in the hands of the judges now I'm not saying that Tank would have stopped I mean I'm not saying that Cruz was ever going to stop Tank but that mentality going for the stoppage showing no respect now again Cruz did <laughs> Cruz didn't show much respect but it, it, there was no follow through I was super impressed I couldn't believe it really this man was the first man to walk down Tank Davis and I that for me it was ticking all the boxes and actually watching this fight proved even more for what I've been saying for the last little while did you see how effective that high guard is high nice tight guard yeah Cruz went in there high tight super duper tight guard one of the best guards in the game and guess what Mr Tank who's people have been talking about even myself I've been rating Tank as the biggest puncher probably in the sport at the moment truth be known and guess what you see what that can't do you see now what that kind of defense can do you can turn Mike Tyson's into pretty average dudes with tight defense when you're all leaky looking like Mr. Anthony Johnston you get murked by a cruiserweight but when you're nice and tight you can walk down small Mike Tyson looking asses but anyway like I said 
I was impressed to see the first man really walk tank down, but unfortunately there was no follow through. He was walking forward and then not doing much, or walking forward and ending up in a clinch. Now I'm not gonna. The thing is, I understand that Tank was initiating a lot of the clinches, but end of the day, guess what? I'm pretty sure people want to clinch with Alvarez too, but for whatever reason, Alvarez is able to get his shots off before he ends up in a clinch. Yeah, and I feel like. Cruz was happy to end up in a clinch, if that makes sense. He wasn't, because for me, or for, talking from a technical point of view, to get a shot off at the correct range, it opens you up for a counter shot. So what a lot of fighters do, people like Sean, Sean Porter, rather than taking that risk, which is something, which is what Alvarez does, and in fact Alvarez ended up getting countered a lot, years ago when he fought Mayweather a lot of the reason he ended up getting countered in fact there's quite a few if you watch the highlights back you'll see that there's quite a few occasions that Mayweather quickly pull counters in between one of Alvarez's shots yeah that's because Alvarez positions himself sets his feet at, at the correct range and then loads a shot up whereas Floyd got no power he's focusing more on speed he'll just ping it out quickly and therefore beat you to the target but anyway the point is Alvarez would rather set himself and kind of almost double down on himself okay yeah I may get caught but I'm gonna focus on me these other guys like Cruz like Sean Porter rather than do that they try and do this sneaky or they try and do something which they think is sneaky Oh, I'll just run in and then I'll find, I'll work it out when I'm there. Sean Porter's whole career has been based on, oh, I won't set myself properly and find a shot at a decent range. I'll run in and then work it out when I'm, when, I, when I'm on the inside, which by the way, he never does. Yeah. So Sean Porter spent his whole career running in and then it ends up messy and he, he scores no points. And unfortunately it was the same for Cruz. Cruz didn't. Very, I think there's only a few times in the whole fight did I see Cruz really get off a clean shot. It was always that that on top of each other clinching and just this sloppy, wasn't it? There was no real setting up shots, taking his time and really trying to connect. Why? Because like I said, rather than take some risk and be prepared to get hit, they always think there's a smart way or they think there's a, a better way of doing it. Well. I won't take no risk, I'll just run in and try and make it messy. I'll run in and try and work it out when I'm there, but that never works. You're never just going to find a perfect shot when you're on top of someone. You have to set it up, get the right distance, and then fire the shot. And take the risk that something may come back and react to it. Instead, Cruz spent the whole night either at long range, where obviously he's no good, or he was on top of... Um, on top of Dave Davis and it was all just messy and it was a free-for-all. No sh no clean shots were landing, really. Now, I'm not saying he didn't land a few clean shots, but it wasn't nowhere near consistent enough for me to dominate the fight, which could have happened. He could have done that, I believe. He could have dominated the fight. But he wasn't prepared to put combinations together at that, at that perfect zone. He was too focused on not getting hit and making it messy. It's like, well, you spent all the time coming forward only to to rush the last part. The whole night, Cruz spent setting up an offense, but the offense really never consistently came. He consistently cut the ring off. He consistently hunted Tank down. But that last part wasn't there. However, I guess you, some people, well, you may be, there may be an argument that the reason Cruz wasn't able to get off clean shots was because Tank kept on doing evasive maneuvers. He kept on doing the Floyd Mayweather running around the place, which is true. But still, I, I feel that Cruz could have pushed it. For example, watch De La Hoya versus Mayweather. Yeah, Mayweather was as slippery as ever in that fight. However, De La Hoya, oh, before, before, before that fight even started, De La Hoya accepted, okay, I'm going to be getting hit tonight. Tellahoy came forward and he just mauled Mayweather. 
Now, he didn't get many clean shots then, but he moshed him. Yeah, he took shots and he moshed. When you're fighting these kind of guys, you've got to just accept it. Yeah, I'm going to get hit. But I'm going to have to win this fight. I'm going to have to focus on myself. Anyway, moving on. Like I said, I was impressed. I was super impressed with the fact that this just shows you. I mean, from Tank's point of view, it's now come out in the post-fight press conference that Tank was told by Floyd, yeah, run around. So, <laughs> but again, what the reason I bring that up is to say that it just goes to show how detrimental the Floyd Mayweather style can be for your career in as much as, number one, the fans were booing Tank. Number two, he ends up in his first close fight. Yeah, the reason Tank's been knocking people out and the reason Tank's been seen as the most dangerous guy at, at the small weights is because he was using the aggressive style I've always talked about. This time he tries the Floyd Mayweather style and he ends up in a controversial 50-50 draw fight. Yeah, all these fighters think they're smart and Floyd tried to justify it in the post-fight press conference. He goes, yeah, well, you know, look at Ali. Ali's sick and this game isn't about... All this game's about is making money and getting out with your faculties intact. No, it ain't. All this game's about is a fair exchange. Yeah? If you're worried about your brain cells, you've picked the wrong industry, Muppet, isn't it? Think about it. It's a bit like saying... It's a, it's a bit like a fireman saying... Well, the only thing that matters is I get paid. No, the only thing, only thing that matters is you put the fire out. <laughs> yeah? That's what you signed up for. If you don't like fires, pick another job. So I'm sick of hearing about boxers saying, well, you know, the only thing that matters is we get money and we save our brain cells. No, that's not the case. The only thing that matters is you win the fight and you win it well. And you deliver value to the fans. That's the, that's the true only, you know what I'm saying? That's the true only thing that matters. Because in, I don't know about you yet, but in no other job, in no other job is the culture based on just getting the money. In every other job, unless you're a scammer, in every other job, the job's about providing value to your customers, is it not? Yeah? If you're selling clothes, you best sell valuable clothes. Every single industry is based on providing value to the customer. But in boxing, it's, it's weirdly, ever since Floyd came along with his boring style, he couldn't sell a, val he co he couldn't sell a valuable or um, exciting product. So instead, he had to flip it around. Well, you know, it don't matter about the fans. It's about making the money. Oh, it was for you because you was boring. But that's, that's the reason, ultimately, people, why UFC can sell a million pay-per-views, half a million pay-per-views for, for fun. And our, and our biggest fighters, lucky to do 200 grand. Look at Crawford versus Porter. Our biggest fighters, lucky to do 150k buys. When UFC, who don't have as many big names as such, they're selling half a mil for fun. That's why, because Dana White focused on providing value to the fans. Boxers are focused on lying in their own pockets. Look at Anthony Johnston. Here's another great example. Big scary ass, big for nothing looking. Yeah? Focused on, oh, well, I've got to think about my brain cells. Listen, let me tell you right now. Any boxer out there worried about your brain cells, you're in the wrong job. Like I said, it's a bit like a policeman or a fireman worried about putting a fire out. If you're worried about putting fires out, you're in the wrong job. Now, I'm not saying that shouldn't be on a list somewhere. Of course, saving your brain cells... Should be should rank on a list, but it shouldn't be number one priority. Number one should be being entertaining or winning in the best way possible. Now, there's some fighters who don't have no power. Now, no one's expecting them to go in there like Rocky, but what we are expecting is for people to play their role. Yeah, if you're big and powerful, like Tank here, or relatively big and powerful, or Mr. Anthony Johnston. If you're big and powerful, and you, and by the way, you built your whole career being exciting, don't then try and 360 spin it or 180 spin it. And you know what I'm saying? Now you've made some money. Now you've milked the fans. You want to try and recreate the wheel. Nah, don't work like that. Retire if you're worried about your brain cells. Because when you was, listen, when you was, sell, when you was building up pay-per-views, 
Yeah, when you was coming up, you weren't talking about no brain cells. You was grateful to sell out the O2 and whatever else. But anyway, let's move on from that. Um, from that rant, uh, I've got a few more points here. Yeah, tank got rocked in the first round. Cruz had a high guard. Yeah, Cruz came out rocking and rolling like Mike Tyson in, in the first round, but that that quickly stopped. That, yeah, it wasn't very efficient. But um, anyway. They made some of the reporters or some of the commentators made quite a lot out of the fact that Tank was fighting a smaller man for the first time. Um, I mean, who knows what to say about that? And what I will, in fact, what I will say is, is that this again for me will be another red flag warning for all the boxers out there, like Tank, who insist on fighting unnamed people because this for me I was in the, I've never heard of Cruz this should have been a routine defense or whatever it is a routine fight instead it ended up 50 50 it just goes to show that what are you doing look at Tia Fimo look at Tweaker Fimo Lopez versus Cambosas another great example out of nowhere Cambosas a star has been born so in a way it's good for the sport but in reality I mean, we build up these names like T like Tweaker Fimo Lopez, like Tank Davis, but really, what what are we building them up for? Because we're not building them up because they're certified. We build them up fighting bums, and then, or we or they get built up having had one decent fight against Lomachenko, which by the way you ran off from the rematch, and then you get beat, and it's kind of like, well, what was the point in that? You may as well have gone in there, and made. Big money fighting the big fights, if you're going to lose anyway. And to an extent, it's the same as Anthony Yard, who fought recently. He may as, he may as well have gone in there with some big name, rather than that Arthur cat. Lyndon. Yeah? Queen Arthur. But anyway, um, moving on, yep. Yeah. I do think there's been potentially a, part, a bit of the Cambosos effect going on. The Cambosas effect I'm calling is where people are now starting to believe that anyone can have a go. And in a way, that's really what the UFC is based on. The UFC is based on, it's not really very hierarchical, is it? I mean, look at McTapper. McTapper was arguably at the top of the hierarchy. And look what happened to him. The UFC has a much more healthy culture all over. Yeah, you can be number 10 in the UFC, get a crack and have a go. And it all changes. There is no big name who gets protected or whatever. There's no big name who, who dominates forever. Everyone can have a go on anyone. And that's how it should be. Too often in boxing, we see fights like Malik Scott versus Deontay Wilder. The dude just turns up and flops on the floor. Like a big muppet. A big useless muppet. It's embarrassing. And that's why, again, the sport is down bad. That's why, don't no one... I mean, how many people do you really talk about boxing no more? It's certainly not really relevant in pop culture, if that makes sense. Anyway. In the fight, Tank, Tank's trainer started telling Tank to go old school. Yeah, he started telling Tank to go to start getting stuck in against this dude. And I thought that was quite funny because we now find out that Floyd had been telling Tank the opposite. Yeah, before the fight, Floyd was telling Tank. And I actually believe now I've got more videos coming soon. I've got some leaks to drop. But I've been, I've heard that from a good source. And I'm going to show you the source. Floyd is now categorically, it's proven now, Floyd is trying to ruin Tank's career. 100%. Yeah. He's pulled off the first part where Tank only fights bums. And now he's doing the second part, which is getting Tank to change his style. It's a fact. Tank already came out and said, yeah, Floyd told me to run around. And then he said, oh, well, I don't pick any of my opponents. Floyd picks all of my opponents. So there it is. Yeah, Tank's confirmed that Floyd picks all of his bum, bum opponents. That's number one. Number two, Tank's confirmed Floyd was the one telling him to run around. Now, in the corner, his trainer was telling him to get stuck in. And his trainer, after the fight, even said that Tank was complaining about his broken hand. And the trainer said, I don't give a F about your hand, it gets stuck in. So clearly, we see what's going on here. Yeah? 
It's not coming from the trainer. This isn't a, a Rob McCrappen situation where the trainer's a bad influence. No, the trainer's on his job. Instead, Floyd, who's nervous and paranoid, and what you notice about Floyd is Floyd's always trying to insert himself to the video. Yeah, he like P. Diddy. He always trying to get in there. He's all in the video. Now, much like Suge Knight, guess what? Eddie Hearn or someone needs to come along and say, "Listen, listen, Tank. If you don't want your if you don't want your promoter to be all in the video, come over to Matchroom, hundred percent. Yeah, Eddie Hearn or someone else, or Bob Arum, or yeah, Scrap Bob, Scrap Bob actually crap. But Eddie Hearn needs to come out and tell Tank, Tank, if you're tired of watching your promoter all in the video, you know what to do. Yeah, come to death, come come to death row, Matchroom." Yeah, come to match room row, 100%, and get away from that big goofy, because Floyd, he's scared, he knows that Tank has the ability to undermine his whole legacy, because Tank got power, and Tank not scary, well he wasn't, until he started hanging with Floyd, now he's scary, now he's running, the whole night he's running, it's embarrassing to see how Tank's changed, anyway, The last thing I'll say is about the whole the whole rematch thing. Now, do I want to see a rematch? No, I don't. Because, like I've explained throughout this video, could there have been a rematch call? Absolutely. Cruz could have pushed for a rematch call. But he didn't push it. He didn't. Even, to be honest, even when you watch Maidana versus Mayweather 1, that was more of a cause for a rematch. Because Maidana, to his credit, he did actually push and take risks. He almost... In fact, Maidana did. Maidana stormed forward and was throwing shots all over the place. Consistently throwing shots and finding gaps. And he rocked Floyd a few times. Isaac Cruz, he was nowhere near as active with a, with a volume. So... Unfortunately, he didn't push. He didn't push it enough. He pushed the pace. He pushed the. He cut the ring off, but he didn't have the follow through with the hands. And ultimately, this is boxing. It's hands. You can cut the ring off and apply pressure all you want, but if there's no follow through, if you keep falling into the clinch, yeah, if you keep fighting like Sean Porter, then <laughs> who wants to watch that? I don't. I don't want to watch Tank Davis running around and watch another man following him around and not a lot going on to be honest that was one of the most boring fights i've watched truth be known it was real boring there weren't a lot of anything going on to be honest and unfortunately with tank having one hand isaac cruz has got no one but himself to blame because that was his fight to lose really on hindsight and it, all that was lacking was that that cambotus mentality i feel if he'd have had that it could have been a different story tonight.